I think we've just made the best design on YouTube. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to make this for your clothing brand. And we're gonna go over why I feel like I ruined it and why I think we should have went with the original before we added the effects. But you gotta have to watch the full video to understand what I'm talking about. So let's get straight into it. Let's go ahead and get straight into the design. First of all, document set up 3000 by 3500 DPI on 300 slash 350. And we're working in RGB because we're gonna need it for the effects. Make sure you click artboards because I forgot to click artboards, but easy fix. All you have to do is go to the artboard tool, drawing your artboard to the size of the actual document setup. And then there we have our artboards. You can get rid of this little layer once we've added in another layer. We have our images here that we're gonna be working with today. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag them into the Photoshop document and start cutting them out. Since this one's isolated on a white background, I can go ahead and use the magic wand tool and then just clean it up by pressing Q and going into the mask and making any adjustments. Usually myself, I wouldn't go for an image like this, but the way I'm gonna place the text around the image, it's gonna hide the cutoff limbs, especially that shoulder towards the right. It just looks very off. So my one major pet peeve when it comes to design is random cutoff limbs. But the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna blend it using the dissolve feature within Photoshop and just a normal black brush onto a mask and just start masking out the bottom half of the actual image. And I'm gonna put it to black so we can see what we're actually doing once we set it on dissolve. Nothing too crazy. I am using a drawing tablet so I can have more control of the actual pressure when I'm removing these lines. Now this does look quite messy, but no need to worry because like before, we're going to be covering this with a bunch of text and effects so I'm not too worried about this. Using the rectangular tool I'm basically going to separate her eyes from the actual image here and then I'm going to place them on top of the original image so I can get a clear alignment of where I want to put her face in the helmet. After I get that alignment complete I'm going to use another mask after converting it into a smart object and remove any excess so it looks perfect. Essentially, now we have the focal piece of our graphic or the centerpiece design. Let's go ahead and start introducing some typography to hide this ugly mask. Regarding the typography, I'm gonna keep it strictly within Photoshop. And the font I'm gonna use is this one here. Because it's obnoxious and loud, we wanna take reference from the Y2K sort of Fast and Furious cars with the graphics on the side. Once I have my type, I'm gonna right click, convert it to a smart object, and then I'm gonna right click again and use the warp tool within Photoshop to add a bit more character to the typography itself and make it look a bit more hand-drawn. Once I have the placement down pat, I'm gonna right click, head over to blending options, then I'm gonna head over to styles, and I'm gonna click one of the layer styles that I've just released on my website. You can go ahead and check those out, especially because you guys were asking me about the layer style, so I've finally released them all, and they can change your design in an instant. But I'm gonna go with this one, and I'm gonna put up the screenshots, which you guys can just pause to get the same effect. Next, we're gonna go ahead and use the Wave and Water brush set to add some texture to the back of the graphic. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with this brush and just basically go in with different levels of pressure onto the actual drawing tablet and make it look like it's torn, ripped up or some sort of scan into Photoshop. Using gradient maps, we're gonna go ahead and change the color of the outfit the lady is actually wearing into a more purple slash pink look because it matches her eyeshadow and it matches the pink slash blue colorway that we're going with. Simply head down to your adjustment layers and add in a gradient map from there. You can go ahead and change the colors to whatever you want. For a good reference, the dark side is basically the shadows and the light side is the highlights. Once you understand that, everything kind of makes sense. For instance, I'm going for a pink look, so I'm gonna add two dark points, which is gonna be a super black and then some sort of gray, and then a highlighted pink within the middle, and then a very light sort of blue towards the end. You can kind of see here, this coming into practice as you move around the different layers and adjustments. I'm using the asset map pack 49 on my website, which has all these assets and they're ready to be used on any sort of graphic that you want if you wanna change the colors real quick. But you can see here as you add in the tones of gray, it adds a bit more of depth to the actual graphic. Now we can go ahead and start working on the background. For the background, we're gonna go ahead and just add in a new layer and we're gonna drop it all the way to the back. Next, we're gonna go ahead and select a color from the actual helmet, whether that's a dark or light purple. And going in using a brush set to dissolve, we're gonna go ahead and create a halo around our main character. For cohesiveness, you're gonna to wanna to repeat this step again, but with the other accent color, which is blue, and you wanna apply a less or smaller version of that halo to the inside, you know, just to add a bit more depth. 
Next, I wanna keep playing on that whole Fast and Furious car sort of graphic aesthetic. So I'm gonna go ahead and import one of the actual assets from the new Speed Racer asset pack, which is meant for Illustrator and logos and stuff like that. But I'm gonna show you guys how to utilize it in a project sort of like this. Now I can simply just drag and drop in the PNGs or convert them into smart objects from Illustrator directly by copying and pasting them in. Um, but I basically want them to frame our subject. I don't want the subject to just look like a floating head. I want it to look purposeful. So with the warp tool, I'm going to kind of bend these in a bit more just to make it look like it is framed properly around the girl. Then I'm going to duplicate it onto the other side and keep symmetry within the design. Now for the sake of cohesiveness, I'm going to go ahead and add a mask onto the flames and using the same brush we used to build the background, we're going to go ahead and remove bits of the flames here and there just to add a bit more texture slash character to the actual flame and make them blend within the project and not just look like background pieces. Now with the same theory in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and add texture to the actual typography that we have. With layer styles, they kind of adapt to the actual object on that layer. So if we add a mask and we go in with a brush and remove bits and pieces, the actual layer itself warps around the removed parts, making a much cooler slash unique effect, playing within that grunge sort of racing realm and overall giving our design a better character or slash aesthetic I don't know if Arabic letters are going out of style, but usually when something is going out of style is when I usually love it the most. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in this little Arabic font here, type revision, and I'm gonna go ahead and use one of the layer styles again, but more of a purple color, just to add something to the bottom here and frame the design a bit more with the whole use of symmetry. Now moving on to the main typography, I went ahead and used this font. And with the actual layer style, I used the same one or same effect that we did for the bottom, but I just went ahead and changed the color into a more so purple because you can edit layer styles and adjust them to the sort of graphic that you have. I originally wanted to be different with a more so rounded upper sort of graphic, but I realized that it looked pretty trash. So I went ahead and warped it again to be the sort of classic bend or bend across to frame the rest of the design and make it all to come together that way. So I guess make this design come together a bit more. I went ahead and changed the actual color of the highlight within the gradient map to change the tone to a sort of yellowish because I don't know, I just felt like the yellow added a bit of a tone to the rest of the design, made it a bit more warm. Even though that you won't see these within the final graphic because we're gonna go ahead and add a bunch of layer styles on top of this to make it look a bit more rugged slash grunge because we like that look. But you can see here what the raw design looks like and this is where you go in and add your colors before you take them away. Now this design itself is very full. We don't need to add anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer and go in with a round hard brush and adding these little dots around the graphic. Why? Because I just wanted to test how they look, especially because the revision type has circles. So I wanted to add that element within the full graphic. I went ahead and copied the layer style from the main typography revision at the top and pasted it onto that layer to give the dots the same effect as the main typeface. After that, I went ahead and just got rid of some of the outer glow and the drop shadow to just make it look more like a complete circle. And this is the complete result. Lastly, I wanna go ahead and play with the highlights and show you guys a new trick I've been working with just to make my highlights look a bit different to everyone else's highlights. Now, this is a very simple process. The first thing I want you guys to do is make your artboard completely black. Main reason being is because white is a highlight. So add a highlight to the whole thing. So go ahead and change your artboard to black. The next thing I want you to do is add in a new layer. From here, I want you to go to select color range. And this time we're gonna go ahead and select the highlights. From here, I want you to copy these settings that I have. The fuzziness, you can adjust it. And you can also adjust the range to only select the highlights or select a multitude of different shadows and highlights to make a more fuller look. From here, I want you to make the color white and fill that in using the paint bucket tool. 
and you can see here that everything looks very blown out at the moment. I want you to go ahead and add a gush and blur to the effect and this is going to give your design a like natural airbrush effect but this is not what we want. We're going to go ahead and set this layer to dissolve which is going to go ahead and make our design have a sort of bubbly grungy sort of highlight which I really love and I haven't seen anybody else do it before. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that for these highlights on her face. I'm going to add the same effect so I can have a more cohesive sort of looking graphic. Again, this is all going to be hidden, but it's the little details that count in making your design look 10 times better than the competition. So once we zoom in, you can see that the graphic looks crazy and the highlights pop out, making the design stand out a bit more and look a bit more cohesive like one piece. Now for the back graphic, I want to keep the same elements we use at the front because I'm too lazy to go ahead and make a whole complete new back graphic from complete scratch. And for the sake of cohesiveness, utilizing the same typographies like Love is Rage and putting that to the back and just using that as the main type is really good in understanding how to make a complete design look natural. Now, I wanted to keep this back graphic a little bit more empty in terms of the overall look. The reference that I had was these sort of Nike vintage poster ads, but adding this sort of Y2K grunge hairstyle aesthetic to it. So having the same typography as those designs, but having the same layout as those Nike designs is the look that I was going for. And what I'm doing here is essentially I'm redrawing in her hair. You cannot mask out hair efficiently in Photoshop. So the way I do it is basically I make a rough cut, then go in with a black brush and redraw the character's hair in. Now I went ahead and added this car in to play on the whole racing sort of theme. I didn't want to go with like a crazy GTR or something like that. I want to go with a vintage sort of time capsule vehicle that looks really nice with the outfit that she has on. It's giving me like 19... 80s professional racer sort of vibe or 1990s sort of racer vibe so that's a whole aesthetic i'm going to go with again i went ahead and added in my logo three times at the back here just to add that sense of balance and element of symmetry within the graphic because we're doing this in threes it just levels out the design a bit more and like i said before the whole nike sort of effect where they had these vintage designs and most of the designs took up two thirds and the rest of it was just typography that's sort of what i'm going for in terms of placement here but in a more hairstyle y2k grunge aesthetic Lastly, don't forget to add texture to your actual graphics. And I also went ahead and added in the same glow effect that we did for the front to the back also to ensure that we're keeping that cohesive sort of effect. But with the actual grunge look, I went ahead and used a brush to sort of get these um, logos into a more grunge characterized look. The last few steps are completely optional. The design looks completely fine. What I'm about to do now, is I'm going to kind of ruin the graphic on purpose. I'm going to get rid of some of the colors and I'm also going to add in this sort of drawn crayon sort of texture because I want the design to have the sort of vintage feel. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to filter gallery. Once I convert my whole design into a smart object, make sure that your colors are set to the primary or the actual main colors and it's black on white. From here, I want you to go into the sketch section and select this one. And once you've got that, copy the settings and you will have a look like this. Now you can go ahead and scroll through the different effects that they have within the blending options and how it affects your drawing. For me, I go with three primary ones. I usually go with overlay, hard light, and kind of lighten. Those are the primary ones that I go with. This design, I'm gonna go with hard light because it kind of strips the color away and makes it look like a photocopy scan of a graphic. This not only gives it a more unique feel, but I feel like it has a sort of character to it where you kind of associate it with the time capsule that, with the time capsule that I'm working in, which is that whole 2000s early magazine sort of de design. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same step for the front and it's a pretty easy process. So just convert your design or layers, all your layers together into a smart object. Once you've got them in a new file, make a duplicate always and drag that one on top. And I want you to set that one to highlight and your design is complete. 
To finish this off, I'm going to drag the designs over into Illustrator and place them on this new mockup that comes with any purchase of the ATL motion layer styles. From there, I'm going to grab one of the speed racer assets that are a bit more racing sort of grunge graphic, and I'm going to apply it to the sleeves using a clipping mask. Now, clipping masks are fairly simple to do when it comes to these when it comes to designs like this. I wanna show you guys how I make a clipping mask. The first thing I do is position my graphic, whether that's on the sides or the sleeves. And mainly, I don't even do clipping masks when it comes to mockups. But if you wanna clean up your mockup a bit more, this is how you do it. Once you've got your placement, I want you to go ahead and draw a rough box around the actual graphic. So I'm just gonna make this rectangle around the sleeve. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select the bottom layer which is the actual graphic in the top layer and right click and create clipping mask now we have to clean up our clipping mask and in order to see it we have to press command y to view it in wireframe mode and we can align it to the rest of the mock-up itself and then use that to build a clipping mask usually you would use the color layers to make a clipping mask but since i'm making this from scratch before i finalize these mock-ups i'm going to go ahead and do it this way now the designs are complete we have a and we have B. So A is the design that we completed all together. It looks nice, it looks clean, it looks complete. But I feel like the vintage layer effects that we added weren't necessarily needed within this graphic. I feel like we kind of stripped away what we had already to sort of get a look that I've been going with consistently for all my graphics. And that's why I feel like B is the winner. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think B is better than A? The original colors, the vibrancy, and all the crazy looking highlights that we worked endlessly for that weren't really seen. But it's about the little details, the process which makes your design stand out. It's not about what the end result looks like. Well, it is about what the end result looks like. What am I lying? Anyway, hope you guys are having a good holiday. Stand on big business.